Hi, I'm Andrew, and this is my tutorial walkthrough for a Next.js and Stripe e-commerce site. Okay, so in this uh, walkthrough, I'm going to actually explain how to get a Next.js app up and running with the Stripe checkout page. Uh, we'll, we will store the product details in Stripe, and we will server-side render the product information for SEO. Okay, so to get started, I've actually got a four-part uh, tutorial on my blog site at andrewford.co.nz, and I've also got a repo of the project sitting here. Okay, so that's the full project already done, and you can get started having a look at that if you would like. Um, pull that down, or you can follow along with the video. So I'm going to actually get this whole project up and running again, uh, luckily on my machine, and we'll just walk through this whole process. Okay. So um, you may have used the likes of Create React app before, uh, which is fine. Uh, but the benefit of using something like Next.js is that it's got a lot of things already taken care of for you, things like the routing of the paths and stuff. It's actually got uh, an API backend already built in, so you don't need a separate Node Express app to be running to have an API. And it's also got some great functionality in terms of server side rendering and also the ability to create images with the basically being able to serve up the right size image for the device that you're actually rendering on. Okay. A um, little bit of details about me. I'm a tech lead. That's what I'm called at Developers Institute. Um, I'm an instructor. I teach people how to become developers, uh, literally from beginners all the way through a one year to two years course. And in that period, uh, they can learn to become web developers. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, got the first command there to get the actual app set up initially on our machine is the npx there. So I'm going to create a uh, next app uh, using that. Uh, I need a terminal window. So I've already got a folder there uh, on my local machine. I'm going to create this new next app. That will install it. Okay, so um, I'm going to just call it uh, next JS shop. Okay, it's going to go through and install all dependencies we need. You can see there it's got React, React DOM, and next. All right, so now that has created our project, uh, let's go into that directory. Okay, cool. And I'm going to fire up uh, VS Code. Let's maximize that. Right, okay. Great. Okay, so I've got uh, my Next.js all set up and going there. I've got uh, the configuration of the project, like so. Uh, we've got a yarn lock file there. Got our package, we've got our next config file. Um, so, and we've even got an ESLint there as well, which is very cool. Okay, going back to our project here. So, we've done that, we've managed to create our new project, and I need to now run uh, npm there. Um, I'm just going to do it slightly differently. I prefer to run it from the npm scripts here in VS Code. Okay, cool. So now that is running, I'm going to open a Chrome browser here and let's see, uh, it'll be like a host 3000 there. Okay, so this is the default page on Next.js. We can see we've just got some links and the like already set up for us. Um, 
we're not too worried about that for the time being. Let's just go back and look at the pages here. Okay, so it's got pages folders where the routing happens. It will direct the URL page in your app. For example, if you had a file called contactus.js to be routed to it, you would have the following URL in your browser. Like I said, um, the router is already there. It's built in. We do not have to create um, or install a routing uh, package for our project. It's already there. We've also got um, this pages folder, which also has an API folder in it. Okay, so that's where we can set up our API. So now we can see, just like we had before, we had the browser open. Okay, so to start with, we can clear all out the, the pre-existing items there, and we can set up our own page there. Uh, I'm just gonna grab this here and I should be able to copy that into my project, like so. Okay, we probably have, like I said, a pages folder. We've got a API folder, we've got an index folder here. Okay, from the get-go, we've got all the content for it. Um, I'm just gonna actually, let's just clear all this out. Let's start fresh. Okay. There we go. Okay, uh, let's clear the standard install documentations out. Time to make our first component. Okay, so we've got a layout one. Okay, so let's grab this. I'm just gonna place this into our home page. Okay, just use my fragments there. React fragment, you know, just the empty uh, elements there. So those, if you don't know, uh, they basically get uh, removed or render. So they get don't get actually rendered. It's a div. It's really handy when you are trying to place items, of course, into your pages for React. You don't want extra divs floating around. That stops that um, by using those fragments there. Uh, so we've cleared that. Time to make our first component. Let's make a new folder called components and add a file called layout.js. Okay, so let's do that. Um, when I meme that, um, we're gonna make that at the top level. Okay, so we've got pages. We create a new folder here called components. Like that. And I'm going to place a layouts.js in there, new file. Like so. All right. So we've got our home page, which is going to have our products in it. Um, we need to now create a layout so that we can basically not have to reduplicate um, pages for the rest of the site here. So if we grab all that, Okay, and we place that into our layouts.js file there. We've now got a layout file. Now you can see there it's linking to a styles as well. So we'll do that shortly. And we've also got the links there to the container. So what that means is we can pass uh, children through to this. They're gonna render inside the main container there and we're going to get, be able to get uh, our the likes of the fav icon. It's going, to, it's going to stay in the head there. Uh, we can have the same sort of layout for all our pages. It just saves us having to do it from scratch every time that we create a new page. So like in the article here, this will be the layout shared across all our pages in the shop. To add to that, we'll add a header and footer component. Okay, so again, in the components folder, we're gonna create a header.js and a footer.js. So in here, header.js, I'm gonna grab that same content again. There's not a lot to it, but it just saves us having to start from scratch. And a footer.
Okay. There we go. Footer. Okay, so now we've got a header and a footer. We now need to actually add that to our layout. Okay, so you'll see a lot of the time in my guide here, I've got sort of comments where it'll tell you the places where you need to grab the content. Um, I'm going to grab that header and footer. And so we need to import this into the layouts.js. Okay, and we've got that header and footer there. So under here, I'm just going to place this header. And I'm going to place the footer. Okay. So the great thing about this is that we're going to be able to share this same component uh, layout across all our site. Okay. So we just have to have the one header, the one footer, this one layout file. All our pages can then use it and we can pass through components to be the, I guess, the content as such. And we get that sort of not having to do it from scratch every single time. Okay, let's switch back. All right, so we now have a layout component we can reuse throughout our application with the header and footer on every page. We can pass the content for the page via a children prop. Like I said before, that children prop is there, which means we can pass through and whatever component we pass through to it's going to be sitting inside here. Okay, it's going to be sitting inside that main class container. Okay. Um, okay, we have a, may have noticed we have a reference to a CSS module, but haven't added that to a size folder yet. By default, Next.js supports CSS modules. Okay, the major benefit of CSS modules is that we can avoid CSS name collisions, and it makes CSS, makes unique CSS class names, and feel comfortable to delete an unused CSS file. As we know, it's only relevant to one component. There was a typo there, I need to fix that up. Um, so the actual uh, best part about sort of modules is we can have co-location. We can keep our styles in the same location or we can even use the name naming convention so that we know if we take away a component, we, we know to take away that CSS that goes along with it. Okay. Um, I'll put a link there to CSS tricks on uh, talking about CSS modules. Uh, it's well worth having a look at. Uh, CSS modules is kind of like the alternative, I would say, to sort of the JS and CSS sort of libraries like style components and emotion. Um, and I'm a big fan of CSS modules because, well, I'm a fan of CSS to begin with. So I find it a lot easier. Okay, uh, so we would notice that the corresponding CSS class is above a reference as a JavaScript object. Yeah, so that's how CSS modules work. They, we reference the CSS file, um, we can then pull through the, whatever we name that style sheet and the individual classes that come from it. Okay, so that means when it's actually rendered onto the page, um, it will actually prefix with the name of the component and our class name. And so we won't get our collisions with any other CSS classes throughout our project. Um, and it's all, all done and created a CSS file at the end of the build process. Okay, so we need to create that file. Layout.module.css, I'm going to copy that. So I've mentioned we should put it into our styles folder. So we've got layout module.css there. Great. Um, I've done some of the styling for you. Um, I'm just going to grab that because that's going to make our life a little bit quicker to get all that done. So it's basically just creating a container there. Um, it's just got some in height, um, you know, flex direction, uh, some padding, etc. Okay. Um, and we need to add that to the layout component so that it can get that into the head. Okay, sorry, the home. 
Okay, so now we need to take that, uh, go to the home. So where was that? The home is the index.js, a little bit confusing there, naming convenience, but um, index is always like the first page, it always gets loaded. Um, and we can't find that layout. Why can't we find that layout? What have I not done? Ah, I've renamed it. Okay, so I've called it layout. I'm just going to call it layout. Okay, so that's looking better. Okay, so we've got the, again, that index sitting under pages. That index is going to be that first page. We've now got that layout in there, and we need to actually start getting that rendering there. Okay, so we can grab that layout. I'm just going to grab it like that. We have the head there, layout. Okay, like I said before, what do we put in here? We'll get pass through to the layout component and we sort of get that sort of uh, portal through to the actual underlying there, um, which means that we can have that sort of consistency for things like the header and the footer of the layout is all just going to come from that layout there. And whatever we pass through here is going to be relevant to this individual page only. Okay. Um, so we've got the header component to start making that look nice. Okay. So we're going to need a header uh, file as well in our styles. Okay. So I'm gonna grab that name there. Place that into the styles. Okay, so we've got our header module.css there. I'll grab that content and then I'm going to apply the styling to the header as well. Okay, so header module, paste it in. All right, and we also need to, we can just grab this here and we'll just replace that header content. Okay, like so, cool. Header, main nav, logo, icon nav. Okay, so you're starting to see the picture here. We're starting to actually get our sort of layout happening. Um, we also need to have some sort of uh, global style sheet. Generally, I use something like global. So this is going to represent uh, things like my CSS variables. Okay, so if I grab that, I'm going to create a global.css in the, uh, we've already got one actually, so I can just replace that. Uh, I'm just going to take it to the top there, add that. Okay, so now we've got that throughout. All right. Let's have a look at what our project is looking like. Okay, so we've still got some, we've got some errors here. What did I forget to do? It's always a good idea to check, and I bet I'm missing this import here in my header. So if we go to the header, yeah, I'm missing that. Uh, the React uh, and sort of the Next.js setup is going to complain about a missing file there, so we can just jump to that and cool we're starting to get a look and feel going on okay so we can see we've got a header up here like i mentioned before it's got this unique naming because it's coming from css module first being the name of the component um, the name of the class and then a unique number at the end there or unique uh, id right Let's see, global CSS. Okay, some icons. We're going to make this header look a little bit nicer. Uh, we're going to use the React um, versions of the hero icons. I'm going to install those. You can use yarn if you want. Um, I'm just going to use npm in this case. Okay, so I'm going to create a new terminal. And I'm going to do that. Okay, so this is going to install that package for us. Just wait for that to happen. Okay, now we've installed the hero icons. We're going to continue on with 
the rest of the tutorial here. So we've got to add these icons now to our header.js file. I'm just going to grab that, paste that in to my header.js. Like so. Okay, so now we've got those icons and I'm now going to, let's see, let's try it, let's just grab it from here. I think this is a good place to start. There we go. And paste that in there. All right, okay, so we've got the icons now, we've got an unordered list there. So this is the icons that are gonna be on the right-hand side. Let's actually have a look at that. We should actually have that now uh, rendering out. Okay, so it's getting there. I wonder if we've got an issue here with our class names. We've got the search icon. Uh, we probably don't have, yeah. I jumped too fast ahead. I needed to actually get these, so we're not going to be able to see them. We need that uh, color of the actual icon there. It's, it's just not going to show. Let's see if this fixes it. Here we go. Okay. What's the moral of that? Always read the instructions there. Okay, so we've got the header looking tidy. We've got our star sheets done. Let's come back and have a look at ah, last part. Looks like we've got to add the footer in. Okay. Uh, I'm probably just going to copy this whole section here in the footer. Let's pull that up. Footer. Okay, so we've got a lot to paste in. Let's do that. Okay, we've got footer there and we're going to need styles for it of course otherwise it's not going to look good okay we haven't added a style sheet there for that so we should do that and thankfully i've even got it listed out for you here yeah. yep that's why it's complaining because i don't have it okay photo.css <laughs> What am I doing? Paste the module name there, otherwise it's not gonna work. And, okay, so we've got the content showing now. And let's go down to here and to our CSS file. Okay, and straight into here. Okay, there we go. So we've got our online shop, nice. Oh, yeah, we're we're at this stage. That's pretty cool. Okay, we've got quite quite far into it. Uh, next, we're going to set up this Stripe store. So I'll do that in the next video.